In this video, I'm going to talk about the midpoint formula and go through a couple of examples that uses the midpoint formula. Um, the first example that I'm going to do is just a simple, okay, find the midpoint between two coordinates example. And the second one that I have over here is actually you know what one coordinate is and you know what the midpoint is, but you want to find what the other coordinate is. So this one over here is a little bit more difficult, uh, but we'll start with the easy stuff and then move over to the harder examples. All right, so the first thing I'm actually going to write down is the, the midpoint formula um, right off the bat. So usually when we do midpoint formula, we write big M equals parentheses x1 plus x2 over 2. Okay, so this is x sub 1. Uh, what I mean by sub, uh, when, when you write a 1 or a 2 below, it, it's not an exponent. A lot of students get that get that wrong. It's not an exponent. It's just a label. It's Basically what this means is this is the first x, this is the second x. That's all that really means. Anyway, uh, so you take your x's, add them together, divide by 2, and then also same thing for the y's. Take y1 plus y2 and you divide by 2. Add them together, divide by 2. Now, there's another thing in math that you use. If you take two numbers, divide by 2, that's also known as the average. So during this during this video, I'm going to say that a lot. The average of the x's right here and the average of the y's. That's what's used to find the midpoint. Okay, so this doesn't look like a normal formula that, we, that we've used in the past. We got parentheses, we got commas, and all sorts of stuff like that. Basically what this is, is we got a formula right here to find out what the x coordinate is, and we got a formula right here to find out what the y coordinate is. That's what we use to find midpoint. So that's why it looks a little bit different from the rest of them. Anyway, all right, so what we want to do is we want to find the coordinates of the midpoint of segment PQ with endpoints uh, P is negative 8, 3, and Q is negative 2, 7. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to use the midpoint formula here. So my midpoint, again, we usually say that a midpoint is M. Uh, a little mistake that I made here, uh, actually, I actually shouldn't do that. It's not M equals, it's simply just M midpoint. Okay, now you could probably put equals there, but it doesn't make much of a difference. But anyway, uh, I won't put an equal sign there. M, so I want to take my x coordinates, add them together, divide by 2, take the average of the x's, and what I want to do is I want to take the average of the y's. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to take these numbers, negative 8, 3, and negative 2, 7, and plug them into the right spot. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Make sure that you plug the x's in where they're supposed to go and the y's in where they're supposed to go. Uh, just don't mix them up. Uh, so for P, we have an x of negative 8, and for Q, we have a negative 2. So for my midpoint, it's going to be negative 8 plus a negative 2 divided by 2. And for the y's, I have a y of 3 and a y of 7. So we're going to have 3 plus 7 divided by 2. Just again, just the average of the numbers. All right, so 8, I'm going to do this all at once. Negative 8 plus negative 2, two negative numbers. They're going to add to get a bigger, bigger negative number. So this is negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So I know what the x coordinate of my midpoint is, it is negative 5, and then over here, 3 plus 7 divided by 2, uh, 3 plus 7 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5, okay, positive 5. So my midpoint is negative 5, 5. So that's the point that's halfway in between these two coordinates. All right, so again, that's using the midpoint formula, pretty simple, just make sure you plug in the points where they're supposed to go. All right, so... Now, let's do this next problem. This one's a little bit more difficult. The difficulty level between the first and the second problem here is, is, is pretty steep. Okay, so stick with me here. M is the midpoint. M is the midpoint of the segment XY. So M is in the middle. X has the coordinates of 2, 7. Okay, so just like last time. And M has the coordinates of 6, 1. Okay, so th this is where it's a little bit different. We know what X is. It's 2, 7. And we know that the point in the middle is going to be 6, 1. That's a little bit different. Find the coordinates of y. So now we're finding the coordinates on the outside. So it kind of looks like this. If, if you don't have a grid, you don't have a graph with you. Okay, so here's x, here's m, here's y. We know that x is 2, 7. This is a very bad drawing. This is not very accurate drawing, but it gives us kind of an example of what's going on. So x is 2, 7, m is 6, 1, but we don't know... We don't know, bad question marks there, we don't know what y is, so that's what we're here to find out, okay? 
All right, so we know where the middle is. We know what the first point is. We need to find the second point. Okay, now what we're going to do is, even though this problem is a lot different, we're still going to use the midpoint formula. Just like the last problem, we're still going to use the midpoint formula to start off. So my M is equal, uh, not equal, don't use the equal. Get rid of that. Is X1 plus X2 over 2, Y1 plus Y2 over 2, Okay, now I'm going to plug in the things that I know. I'm going to plug in the things that I know. Now, this is where it's going to look a lot different from the previous problem, but stick with me here. Now, the thing is, this part right here of M, this middle point, we already know what that is. We know it's 6. This piece right here, we know that the coordinates of M are 6, 1. This piece we already know what the answer to is. And, we, and X coordinate x-coordinate, those two, we actually know what one of those already is if we look at our x-coordinate, two. So we actually know pieces here. So this is what it's going to look like when you solve these type of problems. Two is one of the x's that we know. The other x we don't know. That's one of these ones up here. We don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it as x2 divided by 2. But the thing is, I know what the end result's going to be. So what I'm going to do is this piece is going to be equal to 6. Now, again, that looks very different from what we did over here. But again, it's two different types of problems. So again, the, form the formula looks the same that we're going to use, but the method of solving is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so we have to go over this once more. M, where do you know what the, the x coordinate is going to be? It's going to be 6, so we know what the end result is going to be. And we know what one of the x-coordinates is. We know that it is 2. But we don't know what the other x-coordinate is. Okay, that's y up here. We don't know what that is. So that is how, that is why we set it up the way that we do. Okay, now the y portion over here, this second part, is going to be set up the exact same way. So now I know what one of the y-coordinates is. It's 7 plus y2. Okay, I don't know what the other y-coordinate is. That's up over here. I don't know what it is and divided by 2, and I know that eventually it's going to equal 1. I know eventually it's going to equal 1. So now what I have here is I actually have two equations that I need to solve to figure out what this x-coordinate is and to figure out what this y-coordinate is. Okay, i got two equations to solve. Okay, both of these equations are going to be two-step equations, so I'm going to try to do all my work right here if I have space for it. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do with this portion of it, um, if I want to solve for this variable here, I need to get rid of this 2 that's dividing, so I need to multiply both sides by 2. So 2x, nope, nope, why am I using x? Don't use x. 2 plus x sub 2 equals 12. Multiply times 2 on both sides. Gets rid of the divide by 2, and then i got to multiply the 6 times 2, which is 12. And then get rid of this 2 over here, so i got to subtract it over. x2 is equal to 10. Okay, I'll put my parentheses around that. I don't necessarily need to put parentheses around that. Let's not do that. Let's save some space here. Okay. So now that x2, x sub 2, that tells me what the second x coordinate is supposed to be. It's supposed to be 10. Okay, now I'm going to come over here, do the same thing. Get rid of this 2. To get rid of this 2, I've got to multiply times 2 on both sides. Okay, 7 plus y2 equals 2. If I multiply times 2 on this side, it just gets rid of the divide by 2. If I multiply times 2 on this side, 1 times 2 is going to be 2. Okay, take the 7, subtract it over to the other side. Y2 is equal to, this is 2 minus 7, is going to be a negative 5. All right, so now what I have here is I have what the second Y coordinate is supposed to be. I have what the second X coordinate is supposed to be. And those represent this point up here, this Y that's supposed to be on the edge. So this tells me that my Y coordinate is 10, negative 5. And that's my answer. Again, the difficulty level of this type of problem is much higher than what the first one was over here. Uh, just keep that in mind with this. You might have to watch that a couple of times to, to, to get all that. Uh, the biggest struggle is to get from the first line here to the second because now we got these equals in here. That's a little bit different. Okay, but you might have to watch this again to fully understand, um, fully understand what's going on. All right, that is...
is a couple of examples of the midpoint formula. Hopefully these will help. Uh, just make sure, slow down, take your time. Make sure you write out, make sure you write out the formulas to begin with uh, so that you know where the numbers are supposed to go. Uh, just don't throw numbers in there willy-nilly. Uh, you got to make sure I have some organization to this. Anyway, I hope these are a couple of examples helped.